Hello, folks. Welcome back to Wilder Woman. Corey here. If you're new, hello. Merry Meet. How are you doing? Glad to see you here. This video is going to be a little bit different because I am going to be talking about things that I have been doing in order to heal from the car accident that I went through in April. We're going to be talking about modern medicine stuff and some more naturopathic stuff, okay? Really talking about bridging the two worlds in terms of healing, not just physically, but also emotionally, because there's a big emotional component to, you know, physical trauma. So that's what we're gonna touch on today. I've already tried to record this video a few times. It got really rambly. So hopefully, you know, third time's a charm here. But for those of you that don't really know what happened in April, my family and I were involved in a car accident while we were on vacation. It was a three car collision. One car started it. And that person has already, you know, it's going through court right now. <laughs> Just say that. Um, they have been charged with inattentive driving. So if you get anything from this video, please make sure that one, you wear your seatbelt. Always, always, always wear your seatbelt. One of the vehicles involved, two uh, passengers were not wearing their seatbelts and they suffered more egregious injuries than, you know, was necessary. So please wear your seatbelt. Number two, please pay attention to the road when you're driving. There's nothing that's happening in your vehicle or outside your vehicle that's more important than you focusing on the road and what's in front of you, okay? So that's, that was my, you know, little PSA at the beginning of this video. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. No. <laughs> so, mm, yes, we were involved in a collision. And I sustained a lot of injuries from that collision. I was driving and the way that I angled the car, the little bit that I could before, you know, we all smashed into each other. I ended up taking the brunt of the collision for the folks in my car, which I'm actually incredibly grateful for because my two little ones were in the back seat and then my husband was in the passenger seat. So my kiddos had bad seat belt rashes, bruises, but Perf you know, came out physically relatively okay. So super grateful for that. My husband did sustain a couple fractured ribs on the left side, broken right wrist, I think because he put his arm up. You know, you guys have seen how messed up my hand is, you know. Um, still going through healing for that. And then also had a broken right foot. Okay. So the broke, the top of it was broken. And then also my foot kind of went this way. So there was a bit of or some emulsion fractures on the side of my foot because it did kind of, you know, come in. And these were all common breaks with, you know, drivers in a kind of front collision. So to be honest, I actually, you know, could have come away worse as far as those breaks are concerned because my podiatrist said, you know what, I've seen like worse fractures <laughs> in the foot from a driver in a collision like this. So, you know, you did pretty good. And those breaks are, you know, from slamming on the brake pedal in the collision. Um, so kind of normal, couldn't really avoid it, right? Now, as far as what happened to my hand, being on the steering wheel, what I think occurred, because we did crash, rattled around quite a bit, I had my eyes closed, 
because you just you have that reaction you tense up you know you brace yourself there's not really you don't have a lot of control over that it's just what happens <laughs> right so we hit the airbags deployed and i believe that the airbag pushed my hand from the steering wheel into the uh, windshield as it was being caved in so i pulled this hand away and it was just it was covered with blood we didn't really know what had happened you know at that point just that ooh, my hands messed up right so getting taken in yes there were a lot of scrapes here i mean you can see that they're still trying to heal also this pinky you know broke there is was a fraction at the base of you know my index finger here that has been healing and then you know a fracture in the wrist so this is as far back as i can bend you know this hand this is the best that I can do with, you know, making a fist. This is the best that I can do with, you know, bringing my wrist forward. So there's a lot of healing that needs to get done here still. I'm going to physical therapy, not just for the hand, but for the foot as well. I am walking, yay, uh, but with a cane <laughs> because... Fractures take a really, really, really long time to heal, guys. You know, yeah, you may be in a cast for six to eight weeks, but once that comes off, then the real work comes in with actually getting that mobility back, getting that flexibility back, being able to do the things that you used to do. Any, you know, helpful degree. <laughs> so you know, for a while there, I had to have people come over to help me write checks. I've had to, you know, have people help me type things out on the computer. I haven't been able to work the way that I would like to or go back to my day job. And that is because, you know, 90% of my job is typing. And I can't do that a whole lot nowadays. Even just being on the computer and typing out a description for you guys for a video takes forever. It just does. Um, and a lot of times, I still have my husband help me with it because I'm not that great with it. Or I have to do it one-handed with my left hand. And, you know, something that would have normally taken me five minutes now takes me 35 minutes because that's my new normal until I get flexibility back with my hand. Now, I do have a doctor's appointment coming up in a couple weeks, and we're gonna be talking about surgery at that appointment. I still have glass and fragments from the car in my hand. I want you let that sink in for a little bit. I have been dealing with since April, living with fragments of glass and metal in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> so physical therapy is going. However, taking those fragments out is going to make things so much better. Um, my doc has wanted to let my skin heal before he cut it all back up again, but at this point, I could care less about scarring, and I, I want, number one, the pain to go away. <laughs> number two, I want to be able to push as hard as I need to be pushing in physical therapy, and I can't do that because I'm being restricted by the fragments that are still in my hand. Um, and it, like I said, it's painful too. There's a piece at the base of my ring finger right here that's so large it shows up on x-ray. That's, that's pretty gnarly. And it's not, com it's not gonna come out on its own. Um, you can see here, you know, 
see that blue dot on my knuckle? That's not a marker. That's a piece from the car that's embedded. And you can see the color of it through my hands. It's really gnarly. And I want it gone. You know, these are foreign objects. They shouldn't be there. <laughs> so there's still a lot to this journey. But I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the things that I've been doing. In addition to doing everything that my doctors have recommended that I do, um, going through physical therapy, you know, I have been, you know, using some healing solves, working with botanicals, working with essential oils in order to kind of supplement the modern medicine healing component. So as far as my foot goes, I have been using a lot of deep blue rub, went through probably almost an entire bottle. I would, I would probably say half a bottle in the last 10 weeks um, because I've been using it so much. So Deep Blue has really been helping um, and that mostly handles pain. I was lucky enough that my foot wasn't put into a cast. It was put into a boot that I could, you know, take off and on. So when I was just laying in bed and staying immobile, I could have it off and rub this on it and put the boot back on or put an ice pack on top of it. And then as well, I've been using Comfrey Solve and Comfrey is nicknamed the bone knitter. Um, as you can imagine why it helps support, you know, bone knitting. Uh, in addition to that, this guy also helps with inflammation and just kind of you know, supporting the healing process in general. And this is from Crimson Sage. So um, even putting it on, you know, a little bit, probably four, maybe five times a week during like the first six weeks, like, you know, a little bit goes a long way. I've, I've barely made a dent. So this stuff is awesome. And it lasts a really, really long time. So really good stuff there. I have also been using on my hand from Meadowlark Botanical, this organic healing solve. And this is for scrapes, cuts, bruises. So when I was changing the band-aids on my fingers while still in the cast, which kind of ended right here, I would, I would apply this in alternative to uh, the kind of like a healing ointment that my hand specialist gave me. So it's kind of alternating between the two with this. And then there were a couple times that I was using this drawing solve, also from Crimson Botanicals, so, or Crimson Sage. Now, I did also pick up from Meadowlark Botanical this pain-free balm. It's for muscles, arthritis, you know, using before or after you work out. You can see that the seal hasn't been broken yet. And that's mostly because I've been using the deep blue rub. And then I've also been using a lavender CBD lotion, which has really helped. CBD lotion is the shit. Just saying. As far as, you know, pain goes, rather than popping a Tylenol or Motrin, I was rubbing that on my hand, you know, once, you know, the scabs fell off. Oh, that helped so much for targeted pain. Just amazing. And I didn't think it would. I was just like, how useful can this really, can a solve or a lotion really be in terms of pain? You know, especially when it doesn't have something like eucalyptus that's really, you know, astringent. And it was amazing. Like, you know, very quick results. So, Love that stuff. Maybe getting some more. 
also, because I was in a car accident, two weeks before the car accident, I gave birth to a baby. Like, my immune system, I feel like, was just put through the ringer. And so, of course, I got a cold. Like, <laughs> a week and a half after <laughs> we got back home. Probably not even that long. Probably just a week after we got back home, I got sick. So when I placed the order with Crimson Sage, I also got this Tranquil Breathing Solve, which is basically an all-natural, like, Vicks Vapor Rub. So I was using this, rubbing it on my chest to help su uh, support breathing and to combat the congestion. And that really helped as well. And I love the smell so much more than Vicks, because Vicks is really medicine-y, and this stuff Oh, this stuff smells just amazing. So this one has coconut oil, yellow beeswax, grapeseed oil, eucalyptus, which is the awesome smell there, majorum, thyme, and lavender. Oh, I love it. So really, really good stuff from Etsy. So definitely recommend checking out Crimson Sage and uh, Meadowlark Botanicals. Now, in addition to that, every once in a while, I was taking a drop of Copaiba under the tongue, also instead of Tylenol. And then as well, I stopped this a few weeks ago, and that's just because... <sighs> It wasn't really doing a whole lot. So my hand specialist had wanted me to use vitamin E oil to rub on my hand and massage the tissue to help bring the glass fragments to the surface and see if they wouldn't, you know, come out through the skin on their own rather than him going in and surgically removing them. Well, <laughs> you know, the last four weeks, nothing has come to surface, and all I've been doing is irritating my hand. <laughs> but I think that, you know, the oil has helped my skin and the scars. So what I did was I purchased vitamin E oil in the gel caps. Was a pain in the ass to puncture these gel caps, let me tell you. And then to rub one all over my hand, it was thick, it was gooey, it was nasty. It, this was just not a fun experience. So I did that for two days and gave up. <laughs> and then what I did was I looked up oils that would support skin, especially, you know, healing of the skin. And I decided to make this guy. So you can see how much I've used so far before I ended up stopping because, you know, massaging the skin's not helping to begin with. It's just, it's not. So the carrier base on here is argon oil. And then there's 30 drops of essential oil in here. So this is a really high concentration, but that's because I'm using it acutely. So if you were going to do something like this and you wanted to use it daily, like, you know, this was going to be long-term regular use, I would cut that down to like 15 drops in a 10 milliliter bottle. But what I was doing was uh, rubbing this on just a couple times and really like massaging it in. And we've got 10 drops each of copaiba, frankincense, and yarrow palm. Okay, all three are fantastic for inflammation, for, you know, impurities in the skin, for uh, blemishes of the skin, so scars, wrinkles, things of that nature, um, you know, even scarring from acne, these can be supportive with and, you know, minimizing the appearance of those. So, you know, these looked a lot worse. And just using this to massage the skin, way better than the vitamin E. <laughs> Let me just put that out there. So, so much better. So I'll still be using it, but not as regularly as I was. And I'm also not going to massage the actual scar tissue 
just around it, you know, so not really rubbing the knuckle that has this, you know, piece of car here, but on the sides. So still going to use it, just probably not the way that I was originally using it before. In addition to that, I have been connecting with Bridget for healing. She is my go-to for healing, you guys. She's just, her energy is just fantastic. And for someone like me who struggles with anxiety and depression to begin with, it's pretty easy to slip into a depressive episode after trauma. And that's really what happened here. It has been a struggle to stay positive. There have been days where I've wanted to just throw in the towel as far as doing anything related to the healing because, you know, I was like, well, what's the point? Why bother? But these things are helping as well as the Western medicine, the physical therapy. You know, I'm not seeing results as fast as I would like because I'm a very impatient person. <laughs> but I am seeing results and it is worth it. It absolutely is. But for someone like me who has a history of depression, a history of anxiety, slipping into an episode like that is a pretty easy thing to do. So leaning on Bridget for support and to help pull me out of these funks, she's just amazing at it. And, you know, you may have something else that helps you pull out of that as well. Listening to music, the healing properties of music by itself are amazing. So using the botanicals, using aromatherapy, using meditation, using music, connecting with Bridget and meditation, each one of these things has really come together to really push me through the healing process and help me get out a lot of this stuff that I know I'm hanging on to because, you know, this was one of the tougher things that I've been through and I've been through a lot of pretty tough shit. So it's kind of saying a lot. I don't think most people realize how just a few seconds on the road, you know, a few seconds of a collision like that can just rip your life apart. You know, I don't know how long that driver wasn't paying attention to the road. I'm guessing it was mere seconds. And just those few seconds of not paying attention has caused months of upheaval for me and my family. And, you know, I don't know about the other family, but I'm assuming the same thing. And it's, it's still going to be months for me to get back to any sort of semblance of, of normal. I said I wasn't going to do this uh, because it's been 10 weeks, but I'm still really angry about what happened. And I think that's why I wanted to come on here is to just kind of share with you guys how important it is to not just get wrapped up in the physical healing component, but to also focus on the emotional healing that is needed after a trauma like this. I have anxiety being on the road, especially on a freeway. 
my sleep patterns are all fucked up right now. Days where I have insomnia, days where I just want to sleep all day and I can't get enough sleep. There's just, there's a lot to this. So for anyone who has gone through this or is going through this right now, I just want to say I understand and I am with you because if you've never been through anything like this, it's a hard thing to describe. It's a... Uh, it's not something that I would wish on anybody. You know, so driving is, for most people, the most dangerous thing that they will do each day. Hands down. We could have quite easily been killed. And, uh, and I'm so glad that, you know, our injuries were as minimal as they were. At the same time, though, I, I just want to say, yes, I'm a witch. I'm a spiritual person, okay? But I'm allowed to be pissed. I'm allowed to be fucking mad about what happened. And to try and stomp that out of myself. I think would only do a disservice to me because anger and upset are very natural emotions. And they're emotions that we have somehow as a society attached a really negative connotation to, to the point where we have, you know, whole movements around, ooh, good vibes only, only positive energy, don't hit me with no negative waves. And where anyone who is seen expressing their anger is deemed a, you know, aggressive person and is looked at as, you know, a bad person for hating on others. When in reality, that, those person's feelings are valid. They have every right to be upset. And to have their anger acknowledged, okay? We don't have to agree with the emotions of everybody around us. But if someone gets upset, you know, with something that I've done, I always want to make sure that I acknowledge that they're upset and that that's absolutely valid for them to be upset, okay? And somewhere along the line in the spiritual community, that turned into like a taboo thing to talk about, to talk about anger, to talk about upset, to even say, you know, and, and talk about the fact that anger is actually really healthy. <laughs> you don't want to be pissed all the time, but you also don't want to try and force yourself to be any emotion all the time anyway emotions are there for you to feel and then to release and we've placed a really unhealthy emphasis on certain emotions over others and to say that we need to be completely devoid of certain emotions kind of is getting into like robotic territory like really unhealthy territory in my opinion so you know if you're in my position and you've been trying not to be mad at the situation or mad at the driver, you know, the person that caused the collision 
or, you know, the situation in general or wh whoever or whatever you want to be mad at. Be mad. Be mad. Get upset. Just don't hold on to it, you know. Do whatever the work that you can do to bring out and feel what it is you're feeling rather than stamp it down and explore why it's there because this emotion's coming up for a reason, right? The second thing that I wanted to talk about was not everything needs to have a lesson. Not everything needs to have meaning. Um, I think we've put maybe a bit too much emphasis on looking for the lesson and the meaning behind everything. Humans are meaning-making machines. That's what we are. We, we attach meaning to everything when really there doesn't need to be one. There doesn't have to be a meaning here. What happened to us happened to us. It just happened. And I know that family members of mine, um, friends of mine have, you know, try to find meaning in this. You know, I, I had one family member try and tell me that, oh, you know, this happened to, you know, uh, bring you closer to God. And I was like, we're already like this. <laughs> I, I didn't need a car accident to be closer to deity. Um, <laughs> I'm like, have you seen my YouTube channel at all? Yeah, I was a little confused by that. Um, but I was like, look, what happened, happened. We were at the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, it, it ain't that deep. Somebody wasn't paying attention on the road, and it exploded the lives of nine people. Just each of our lives just, you know, imploded in different ways. And that was it. That's what happened. There's not any deeper meaning than that. And I've looked. I've journaled about it. I've meditated on it. I've you know, ask deity, what, was I supposed to learn anything here? And the response I got was, do you want to learn something? And I was like, wait a minute, what, what do you mean by that? <laughs> and, you know, the answer was, look, if you want there to be a lesson, we can give you one. But no, there's, there's no lesson here. And I struggled with that for a minute before realizing, okay, you know, there doesn't have to be a lesson. Shit happens. Shit happens. And it doesn't need to be any deeper than that. Okay? We survived because we survived. Okay? Fucking awesome. <laughs> and I do think a large part of that is because I asked the divine to make sure that we were protected, you know, before we made our journey back. It's something that I always do when we're in the car. And that's where, you know, all of our doctors and, and folks who've seen the crash have been like, wow, those are the only injuries you've sustained? Holy cow. And I was like, yep, that's because my guide stepped in and protected our asses <laughs> during this crash. But that's it. That's the only big, deep thing that occurred there is, you know, if I had to pick or just pull a lesson out of thin air, it would be a reminder for myself that my guides are watching out for me 
our guides are watching out for us. You know, my husband, my kids, we're looked after. We don't have to go through this alone. But that wasn't a reminder that I necessarily really needed or especially needed a car wreck to drive home <laughs> for me. So, you know, that's, that's kind of my big takeaway on this is I'm focusing on me and healing and making sure that I come out of this as intact as I can, but I'm still pissed. And I still have a lot of healing to do, both emotionally and physically. I do hope to pop on here again, you know, and give you guys another big update. But I do want to shout out, you know, these smaller companies and what they're doing. And I think that at the end of the day, taking, you know, a holistic approach, you know, marrying modern medicine and, you know, more homeopathic remedies, I guess, or tools for support. There we go. And kind of marrying the two really lends to a really great combination for me. And that I hope it comes out to be a, com a good combination for you guys too. So I will link both Etsy shops down in the description below. If you guys need deep blue or essential oils, you know where to reach me. And that's really it. All right. I hope that you guys got something out of this video. Like I said, buckle up and pay attention to the road. Don't cause an accident. You don't want someone like me out there in the world pissed at you. Okay? <laughs> That's it, loves. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and hope to see you in the next video. Until then, blessed be.